clowns are bad right now. I'm scared right now. Bring out the grimace. But like one of us used to drive Ronald around, and way back in the day, a, a buddy of mine there tells the story is that he was in charge of driving Ronald around. And at the time, Ronald was a heavy is there like smoker. a boat mobile? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's like a like a, a shaded van so that you can't see Ronald get into his makeup. Yeah, and Ronald would like be chain smoking, and he's like, I would just look in the rear view mirror and see like sweaty makeup Ronald <laughs> chain smoking. Like, Where's the next stop? <laughs> I ain't hugging anymore. Right? Yeah. I said no hugs. Hi everybody, and welcome to Elden Dogs. Elden Dogs is your favorite podcast about Elden Ring and Elden Ring and Elden Ring and Elden Ring. I fucking love Elden Ring. <laughs> I, I love it. it. I was thinking today, I pulled the disc out of my PS5 once mm. since I got the game, and it was because I have Dredge Physical. Oh, okay. Yep. And otherwise, it's just sitting in there, and it's always like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I notice you're not doing anything right now. <laughs> and... If it wasn't for like the, this podcast, like the other games, I probably wouldn't be playing. I love indie games, mm-hmm. but to pull me away to from Elden Ring, it's tough and it's surprising that I haven't even fully beaten the game twice. But I have five active characters on my second playthrough, <laughs> and I have over a hundred hours on my first. Mm-hmm. So I'm uh, Brad, also known as Sir Gideon Offnir, and I'm very fucking tired of not knowing what's happening in the world anymore. <laughs> I don't have a blue sky. I'm just stuck here in the round table hold, and I'm sending out dung beetles trying to find some magic. That's where I'm at today. <laughs> and I'm Tyler Alexander Iron Fist. Um, I am sleep deprived and hungover, but I had a good weekend. A nice lava bath would help. Yeah, a nice lava bath would be good. Mm. Spent some time on a boat, took a break from eating dead corpses and fighting bosses. You, you can't overeat your dead corpses. You know, you need a vacation from it every now and again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it just gets monotonous. It's not good on your system. I don't no, know what uh, it looks like inside of a jar. I imagine it's just a lot of... It's uh, not heartburn. It's jar burn. <laughs> it's, it's just bad. I got jar burn. Well, we get Alexander's innards at one point, so that's what it looks like on the inside. Yeah. It's uh, flesh and tendrils. Yeah. The, the, the explosion that those jars make when you kill them is pretty gross. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel so bad when I, when I kill them. But, I mean, they started it. That's the problem. Yeah. If they wouldn't have attacked me, I wouldn't have attacked them. Yeah. I'm always looking for an ally in this game. So I'm excited for the next episode when we do Far Missoula. Might be the next or the one after, when you actually get to see Alexander again, the end of the quest. Yeah. We are joined by the wonderful Jack Packard. Hello. Jack, how's it going today? I will be the furtive pygmy, <laughs> which is not necessarily in Elden Ring, but we can assume that the Tarnish is a descendant of the furtive pygmy. The furtive pygmy. Mm, the, the dark lord, the dark soul uh, <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the dark souls. Uh, yes, I'm so happy to be back and talk about Elden Ring. And it's true. You have said before, last time you hear, anytime we want to talk about <laughs> Elden Ring, I will be there. And I also found out that there is another game that I can mention Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, it's so true. That's that's the thing that got me to stop playing Elden Ring, was Tears of the Kingdom. I'm very proud of myself with Tears of the Kingdom. Uh-huh. I haven't gorged like an insane person on it. <laughs> it's just something I pick up sometimes for sure. a couple hours, and it's always enjoyable, but mm-hmm. I'm, it's such a big, long game that I'm going to just take my time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's very fair. Because I can't play Elden Ring for the first time again. Right. Once the DLC drops, then I'll oh, be able to. But so excited. Yes. So excited. Yeah. Hard to contain. <laughs> well, that's like like I I'm to the point of replays of Elden Ring where you only get ten character saves, and so I have to delete some of my older characters oh. to make room for new characters, which is always upsetting. Like, oh, well, but what if I want this guy again? You can't. You can only have ten. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. I guess because I have six, and then I think Dylan made one. And it's just like butthead or something is what he named it. <laughs> I have four. Mm. One is essentially a copy of my first character because I got atrophy and I could not play the game anymore. I took too long of a break. Sure. So then sure. when I went back, I was like, I got to relearn how to do all this. And then my second character became more efficient than my first character. Oh. So it's like a it's like a replica. My problem now is every time I play a game that's not Elden Ring, I start playing the controls of Elden Ring. Mm. And like Link has some shit stamina, and it makes me really upset. He does. That boy needs some cardio. Oh, and the fact, I mean, Elden Ring, one of the best things in that game is that you have infinite stamina when you're not in an encounter. Fuck, am I right? If every game doesn't have that from now on, I'm mad. 
And I was thinking about that very same thing when playing uh, Tears of the Kingdom. And the only issue is Tears of the Kingdom utilizes stamina in so many mechanics that they can never take it away. Because if you're climbing but not in combat, your your stamina is important. If you're gliding, your stamina is important. So your stamina carries through in Tears of the Kingdom in so many aspects of the gameplay that they can never take it away, which is very frustrating. But then it doesn't matter because you can just build yourself a Zonai device and you don't need stamina when you're out in the world. Yeah, I'm intimidated by Tears of the Kingdom because I think I'm a creative person and then I watch some people's Instagrams of what they can actually make (laughs) and I feel... Like inadequate. A, a stupid duty head. I feel like <laughs> sure. a, a second grader who actually walked into a college class. <laughs> this is how I made a 1937 car with razor blades on the front. I'm like, I put an engine on a board. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, I was so impressed. But guess what? Both are perfectly valid. Yeah. And that's the beauty. And One's just flashy. When one, All you really need is like three vehicles like to make, and then you can get do most anything you need. You only need one, baby. You only need one. Now, I know this is the Elden Ring podcast. We're allowed to to talk. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, all you need is the fan bike. That's I've, the I've, only vehicle you ever need. It's just like two engines and then like uh, your control two, stick. Two fans and a control stick. Uh, both fans are uh, 45 degree angle from the control stick. That's the only vehicle you need. It costs nine rocks to build. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is the most beautiful, and it flies, it's fast, it's maneuverable. Boom. That's it. I've seen videos. I haven't picked up Tears of the Kingdom now in about a month mm. because Indie Games Month, you oh, know? Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not Indie Games Month this episode. It's <laughs> the the lore of Ronnie the Witch. I've been very excited for this episode since we, like, placed it on the calendar. Like, we're probably going to get into it in, in, like, this window. Yeah, yeah. Because... She's my probably one of my favorite characters. Yeah, she's you're, intriguing you're, as fuck. You're always horny for dolls. Yes, that is thing. That is a thing that I guess is. A, you should see his bedroom. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, um, he's like a Russian serial killer or something. But on top it's of really that, weird. Every time we do an Elden Rings episode, I learn a lot, and I have so many questions about her. I so I'm about to like get a crash course on top of getting turned out a little bit. It should be said that Ronnie is everyone's favorite. More people have the Ronnie ending than have the regular ending. (laughs) Which is insane because the amount of work that it takes to get there. People love a waifu. They do. And we recently discussed the other waifu with Fia, which I think Mm. would be number one, uh, possibly, if it wasn't for Ronnie's forearms and that mysterious hat she wears. Mm. Yeah. Ten reasons why why we find Ronnie attractive. <laughs> Number one. Well, if <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, she gives us a sword. <laughs> Number two, blue skin, Aichi Wawa. Number three, no Four physical, arms. no physical body. We're into that. <laughs> Number f- number five, she pretends to be someone else for no discernible reason, which is where we can start talking about Ronnie when she first introduces herself as Renna the Witch. Renna the Witch. Now, early on in my my Elden Ring career, yeah. I was like, you know, you're oblivious to everything in the world. Mm-hmm. And then I got to a point where I desperately needed to know everything. And there is an answer. I was at a point where I'm like, there's an answer to everything. And now I've come down to where it's like, we're not going to get the answers, and it's good to have a mystery. <laughs> so, Rena is one of the mysteries. The Snow Witch is yes. one of the mysteries. Um, yeah, but the first time we meet Ronnie, what happens? Uh, the, te- theoretically, like somewhere, and not everyone will run into her, won't run into Rena the Witch uh, at first, but near that first uh, bonfire when you meet uh, Kali the Merchant, if you go there at night early in the game, Rena will summon you over to her, give you the calling, the spirit caller bell, and the three wolves, uh, and then disappear into oblivion. And she says, I heard somebody was going around on Torrent. Right. And she knows Torrent's former master. Correct. Yep. And they said they wanted me, they would want me to give you this spirit calling bell. So that's the first mystery. Who is Torrent's former master? Mm -hmm. Ronnie and Melina both know. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of comparisons between the two. Um, in, In the endings, there are different parts where, like, uh, you know, with Ronnie's, a lot of her art, there's an extra face. Mm. 
and it matches up with like Melina's one eye. Yeah. So is that part of the losing your body process with the rune of death? Did like something split there? Ooh, I like it. Because we don't know a lot about Melina, despite talking about it for 60 minutes on an episode. <laughs> well, and I... Uh, here, here's something I definitely like. I'm, obviously, I'm a huge Elden Ring fan. This is uh, one of those instances in which I think that I, I take umbrage with Elden Ring. Mm, I think I'm ha- excited. I think having Ronnie or you know Rena turn into Ronnie, and then Ronnie was like, "Yeah, I think I introduced myself as Rena." Weird. That is <laughs> unnecessary. Well, she was maybe playing her cards close to the chest because at that point. I mean, she is up to some some no good, according to the Golden she's Order. She's been up to no good. She's 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 got a track record of no good. Yeah. So she's her, a criminal. Her yeah. older half Legit- brother. Legitimately, she's, she's a god criminal. <laughs> her older half brother, the captain of the football squad, she arranged his death. <laughs> yeah. While she also arranged her own death at the same time, she's into that weird shit. Yeah. No. No. So like, I get that. I don't think it's necessary. Still, <laughs> like, yeah. you could have either had. Uh, Kali give us the spirit calling bell. You could have had uh, someone else give us the spirit calling bell, or just have her, in, you know, not introduce herself. Yeah, and make that the mystery. Oh, I find out later. Just that don't give a name. Funny. Yeah. Yep. I am. Who am I? It's just, not important. I'm a witch, and that should be enough for now. It's not important. Given I don't think I'll ever see you again. Oh, you found me, right? It, like it's it's straight up to um, her next door neighbor is Rena. Like when you get to the three sisters and yes. it's Rena's rise. That's mm. like me looking over there and just like, oh, I'm Thane. <laughs> and it's like, are you just looking at things in the room and saying that's what you are? Yes. No, hey, I'm Halo. I'm, ha- <laughs> I'm Halo 4. <laughs> right. Ex- I'm looking at a copy of Halo 4 right now for those of you who can't. Of all see. the cool things in this room, he went with Halo it 4. I'm sorry. Big, it's the biggest title that I saw. Yeah. Uh, and so like there, there is a lot I'm of... I'm Imagine Party Babies. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Imagine Dragons. Uh, there's a lot of things, uh, cause obviously Elden Ring had a long development cycle, had many iterations, had many changes, v- very significant changes, rather close to release schedule. So a lot of it is kind of cut and cobbled together content, which Th- things were designed for this and they got moved over there. Yes. I know Jaren is a big one. Uh, Jaren was originally part of a separate quest line and they like moved him into being the Radon quest giver. Uh, and also it's like, I guess with Selwyn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And Radon wasn't that wasn't his original arena. That uh, arena was originally um, the uh, Estelle Estelle uh, first of the whatever what, one the, of the voids, the natural born of the void or the whatever. third born. <laughs> right. You, and so it's you like, get the hand me down <laughs> stars. <laughs> every, everything is cut. And, you know, they're they're stitching it together the best they could. I think this is an instance in which the seam is showing really hard on the stitching. Yeah, it's unnecessary. It's it's unnecessary to the point where I didn't even see it my first playthrough. I got my spirit calling bell elsewhere. Uh, yes, Ronnie does say her name is Rena, though. Mm-hmm. And then we don't see her for a while. The next time we hear about her is from uh, Roger. Once mm-hmm. you learn more about the curse mark of death, and we talked a lot about that with Fia, and just unraveling the mystery of the Night of the Black Knives, mm-hmm. eventually Roger's like, yo... This Ronnie signed it essentially. Like I looked in there and she signed it at the bottom. Yeah, it's why would you sign it? It's like when uh, in Step Brothers when he's got the samurai sword signed by the guy from American Idol, Randy Jackson. Like you're not going to bump into Ronnie and not not get her signature. Yeah. I had her sign it. Yeah, all no, I had on me was this this cursed blade. This is like this is uh, this is uh, they're being the wet bandits. Uh, she's being. I the was wet thinking bandits, Home Alone when yeah. it comes to it. Like, yeah. why do we leave a calling card? All the great. God killers have calling cards. And I think that was like, you know, obviously like she's in a situation. Ronnie is in is in a situation in which she is trying to disrupt the golden order because she has her own visions of the future. So this is literally fuck you, God. I can kill. I can kill demigods. And right? I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. More so than the the flame of frenzy, which is no, not just God. Let's kill everything. I'm like, whoa! Leave the kittens out of this. Well, let's be let's be honest. Ronnie's is killing everything too. It's got an ending where you're going on a journey to the unknown. The current order is destroyed. 
I don't think everything's dead. The the moon is literally collapsing in on itself. Like life as we know it is collapsing in on itself. So we all become stardust. I'm into it. But it's the same thing as setting everything on fire. The kittens don't burn. The kittens don't burn. No, they're just turned into dust. But they don't burn first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is heavy metal, though, seeing the Flame of Frenzy. Fuck. I, yeah. No, and seeing the, I'll the always Age get, of Stars ending as well. Like, I fucking love it. I'll always get that hug from the Flame of Frenzy, and then I just run off, and I just, like, wash my hands. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, um, millennia, I'm like, just mm. wash my hands, and that's Scarlet Rot. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about your brother. <laughs> 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 gotta go gotta go bye so ronnie's early life she is a redhead yeah which i think a lot of people forget yeah her, and maybe that's her most redeeming quality is she kills herself to get rid of her red hair <laughs> <laughs> i love redheads it's funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's uh the daughter of ranala mm-hmm. and radagon speaking of that mystery i mean the two of one Radagon and Merica are the same being that are also separate bodies, but like one soul ish or whatever. There's, um, there's God shenanigans. There's up in some, there. some God shenanigans, a little bit there. of God shenanigans. Right. But she, she is part of the sect, uh, that is also connected to, you know, the moon wizards of Carrion Manor and of, uh, the academy and so like there there's a, a beautiful duality as we are courting ronnie and fighting her mom yeah and that might be the next time that we run into ronnie as well when you're fighting ranala the first time you, the first phase it's just her floating and sending questionable little baby uh <laughs> students at you yeah just a bunch of paraplegics you know well uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah they can it's, still move their hands they're bipedal <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they got they got massive upper body strength. Just pulling on your leg, just like eh. <laughs> love that cutscene. My least favorite first act in the game because I had to do it a couple times, and uh, it's not hard. It's just time consuming. Well, that can be hard, but that's a good point. The first phase isn't hard. The second phase, though, you hear Ronnie's voice, and she's like, "You will know the full power of Renala," mm-hmm. and she's the one who sends you to that other plane to fight Renala at full power back mm-hmm. in the day. It's Ronnie protecting her mother there. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. And also some of the magic that Renala is using in that second phase is reminiscent of what um, Ronnie has. So she can summon a dragon, which Ronnie has a dragon protecting her. She can summon like uh, wolves, which Blythe is protecting her. Mm. And so a lot of that fight is based on Ronnie as well. And it's, yeah, it's Ronnie protecting her mom. So that's another spot where you see her. But Ronnie is Ranala and Radagon's daughter. Radagon went off to war. Mm-hmm. He fell in love with the enemy. Mm. And maybe magic ain't so bad. But they had three kids. They had, they never say this specific order. Ronnie gives me older sister vibes. I would say Radon's the youngest. Yeah, so pro- I, I think Reichardt might be the oldest. Yeah, it's Reichardt's like, definitely the oldest. Right? Yeah. Like, feed himself to a snake, that's classic oldest brother. <laughs> yeah. I like that Roddy and Reichardt are up to very different things, but they also, like, they overlap <laughs> enough to where... Because Reichardt's involved with the Knight of Black Knives. Like, Ronnie's like, if everything goes wrong, this is how you can, like, move forward with the plan. Mm. So he's aware of it. Radon is off from the siblings though because he's the one specifically stopping ronnie's uh future from happening i I don't know if he's intending on preventing like the stars from moving to stop ronnie we don't really know but he is stopping the stars with his gravity magic Mm -hmm. which he learned so he could ride his horse leonard (laughs) which is a beautiful story yeah i just gotta take a little bit of the load off lenny I don't, I don't find it endearing. He's a big dude. Lenny should just retire. Yeah, he should just Put him retire. on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny, would, Lenny would be happier for it. Yeah. I mean, sure. at some point when you watch your dad eat 50 like people in a row and just float above you because he can't sit on you, are you a happy horse? <laughs> the jars would find it really endearing. They'd be like, you go, dad. <laughs> That's true. I'm so proud. That's so true. proud. Look how many fucking people he ate. It's like Golden Corral up in here. Ronnie, when she was a younger person, she met a snow witch in the woods Mm -hmm. that taught her frost magic and to fear the dark moon and the power of the dark moon. Yeah. And 
The moon is opposite the Erd tree. I mean, it's like sorceries and incantations. It's like faith versus intelligence. And this is actually kind of problematic to a lot of Ray Lucaria because they worship the stars. So like, get that moon shit out of here. We got no time for that. But Ronnie learns from the Snow Witch. We don't know the Snow Witch. Um, it's very George R. R. Martin sounding to me, a mysterious witch <laughs> in the woods. And it could be any number of people. There's no answers. No. And, and to me, like, that, that's the backstory that we need. Like, oh, you know, I based my vibe off of this Snow Witch that I met a, a thousand years ago. Like, that's great. I dig that. I would have loved to get a little more, like, perhaps uh, somewhere in... Oh God! What's the uh, care in the Carrion Manor? Like a yeah. little backstory on why or who the Snow Witch is, or even just like a anything. There. Just anything would have been great. Maybe we'll get that in the DLC because the DLC might be taking place in the past. Um, we don't know because we don't know anything about anything. That'd be a good way to reuse the entire map. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just make a dark version of everything. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> but now there's more caves. Hmm. Uh, so no, that's that's really neat. I, th- I think it's really cool. Uh, w- like the the idea that like this person who technically we are all courting, like Ronnie is a character that we are supposed to fall in love with as players. Yep, she is very much put forward yes. as like <laughs> it uh, felt your choice. Felt very natural for me to want to help her. Yes, yes, she is a doll. Like with, she's with literally... pale blue skin. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did she, I mention I really like Avatar? <laughs> and you know she has this <laughs> she has this soft vocal affect and oh oh tarnished could you help me? And it's like oh I could help you. I would. And there's like a moral really? barometer for the people that help Sullivan try and turn her into a puppet. It's like all right, so you're that kind of a person, <laughs> which I do not ever I will never do that I do want to help Sullivan. I've never done the Sullivan quest lines before, mm. just because I'm kind of a morally against it, but. <laughs> We'll talk about him in a sec. Uh, you mentioned the Carian Manor. Mm-hmm. That's her family's um, manor, her mansion. Mm-hmm. That's uh, where Renala, uh, like, that's their place. Yeah. And the Carians are descended from the original astrologers who got their start up on the mountaintops of the giants, the first ones that learned the magic of the stars. So they're like the big power family in Liernia. And so we didn't really talk about Karian Manor when we talked about Lyrnia the Lakes before. So we meet uh, a nice big troll, E.G., mm-hmm. who is one of the ultimate homies. I have no, yeah. no, uh, nothing bad to say. When I realized uh, he wasn't going to smash me, I was like, thank God. Uh, but is he the ultimate homie? He's not. But as, on the scale of uh, NPCs, I... E.G.'s quiet talking and the fact that he just reads a book, like, I like his vibes. Sure, sure. He does make some mistakes. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. It, it's, yeah, there's a debate. It depends, on, it depends on which angle you're looking at it from. Like, obviously, he takes our other homie Blythe and locks him away in a jail. Not cool, but he was doing it. <laughs> not to, cool. Not cool, but he was doing it to protect Ronnie because he knows what Blythe's true purpose is. Can you, while well, you're getting into like minority report, can you judge right. someone for a crime they haven't committed yet? And if like Blythe's gonna, he's gonna go crazy. But he does. And he does. <laughs> so the, the precogs were right. It's Hitler's baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can kill Hitler's, you can kill baby Hitler. That's a, that's an okay thing to do. You can. I'm saying that right I now. I say you can kill. I say killer. I say steal him and raise him, uh, and give him a regular mustache. Then you will be Hitler's dad. Then and you'll be Hitler's just, dad. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. This is a darker timeline. Kill baby Hitler. Yep, yep. There's no winning. There's no winning. If, no. if Hitler's involved, just get They're out gonna of there. Be real mad you killed that baby. Have but you played? Least... In, you played Inscription yet? No, not yet. Okay. Have you played Inscription? Yeah, I couldn't get past the hump. Okay. The Hitler baby. Just the fact that there's a, there's Hitler in that game is very weird. Hitler to me. is an inscription. No, no. Uh, I know the game hits a meta level as soon as you reach a certain point, and I can't get past the clunkiness of where I am. It's supposed. I know it's supposed to get amazing. At like, oh, once you hit this point in the game, you think it's this, but it's actually this. I can't get past that hump. So eh. I tried. I tried several times. Which is cool. Yeah, it's fine. Um, Hitler, Hitler. We're talking about Hitler. Ronnie. Okay, Blythe. Blythe. Yes, Blythe is someone we have to talk about. Be- I suppose that's true. Before we get to Carrie Manor, we theoretically meet Blythe first. Blythe has also been with Ronnie since they were young. Right. Uh, 
Blythe is referred to as Ronnie's half brother, step brother. Uh, essentially, Ronnie was chosen to be an Empyrean, which also Millennia and what's her brother's name? Uh, Mikola. Millennia and Mikola. Right. They're the other two Empyreans besides Melina. Ro- not Melina. Millennia. Blade of Mikola. Millennia. Yep. <laughs> Son of a Mary. bitch. Yeah. We don't these like, fucking names. These fucking names. I know we talked about this last time, but these fucking names, they're too close to each other. Big time. Big time. But uh, an Empyrean is essentially, the, the rules are, uh, they're born of one god. Mm-hmm. So that's just like, well, what about Rani? And I, that doesn't make sense, but she is born from Radagon, who is one god, but with Ranala. It doesn't necessarily add up, but she was chosen to be an Empyrean. Right. And an Empyrean is someone who could succeed uh, America. They would be the next uh, leader of the, the Golden Order, the Greater Will. Right. And, and they, don't, they don't have to be born of one god. I don't believe America was born of one god. I believe like they are just a person of power who is chosen to be the embodiment of the god on the plane. Right? I, I think anyone who's born of one god is by default an Empyrean, but other things, other people can also be Empyreans. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you're... The god rules. Th- yeah. God <laughs> rules. Oh, dang! <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but, and if you are selected to be an Empyrean by these hairy wigglers that just, like, getting the will of the gods, they're like, just They just gave the peace sign. It took them ten hours. You're saying I'm a, an Empyrean? Okay. But what happens is they give you a puppy then. That's right. Well, they give they give you a shadow. They give you you know the uh, they give uh, which uh, to me the, the lore wise the shadows are the coolest fucking things in the world because it kind of uh, lays flat the hypocrisy of the Golden Order and of Empyreans in general, which is like oh we give you the shadow as a protector. Uh, obviously, like Malaketh is oh no is Mer- Malaketh is Merica's shadow. Yeah. Um, and a shadow's purpose is not only to protect the Empyrean, but also to take out the Empyrean if they get out of line. This is going to be your best friend until you do something we don't like. Yeah. And then it will immediately try and kill you. Fucking love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, is, that is some badass stuff right there, which is why, which is why, like, uh, small tangent, uh, which is why um, the fucking... Uh, Girl. What's his name? Uh, the lion on Godfrey? Horalu? Horalu, yes. When Horalu rips off the lion, it's so he can go full berserker mode so the lion won't uh, end him for breaking uh, Golden Order Prefect or whatever, which is beautiful. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Breaking free of the chains. Yeah. Blythe, we think Blythe is a knight, but it's not Blythe's fault. Blythe is a good person, a good doggy boy. He, he is following orders. He doesn't know whose orders. He doesn't. He doesn't know that he's got that big, baked into his brain. Right. Though. So he he's just a sleeper agent. He just. But yeah, he's just like I like Ronnie, and she's my best friend. And E.G. has that funny mirror helmet. He's just afraid of aliens or something. We love him. <laughs> we don't know why anyone invited Celavis to the party. He is weirding everybody out talking about his dolls again. Yes. And if anything, I think that Ronnie probably had to work with Celavis. Because she wanted to be put into a doll, and he's the master of doll doll magic. Ooh, that's probably right. Even though there is a there is a small thing to where um, it's even possible that Celavis is a doll. Padilla, Padilla, the little the little creepy merchant, the Albanaric. Yes, a hundred percent. I stand by right? that theory. That's so fun. It's uh, so fun. There's so many layers, but. Uh, and, and I can't remember what day it is sometimes. Right? <laughs> um, Padilla but, is a first-generation Albanaric. Um, they can't walk around. Became a puppet master. Yeah. Master puppets. Uh, Millennia. America. Michaela. No, stop it. Stop it. There's too many M's. Uh, the, the really neat thing to me was, like, the way that I did my first story run through is, you know, like, I found Blythe. And, you know, like, you, then you help Blythe with the uh, with the Bloodhound Knight. And you're like, oh, we're buddies now. And then Blythe is there to summon during the... Um, Radon. The Radon fight. And you're like, oh, Blythe is my buddy. Like, that's how I did it first. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, Blythe's my buddy. Then I show up uh, to Ronnie's. And Ronnie's like, hey, 
my buddies will help you. And I go downstairs and Blythe is there. I'm like, buddy, you are my best friend. This is awesome. Don't pet me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like the oh. friend you have in college that's with a different friend group. But every, you run yes. into him at like four different parties. You're like, I fuck, dude, it's the guy. It's everybody you. everybody loves Blythe. It's yeah. like everybody loves Raymond. And the game wants you, I think, because I had the, sa- the exact same the exact same trajectory. Yeah, yeah. Because the merchant tells you, like, all right, go do this fucking snap thing mm-hmm. it, with the wolves over by the giant fucking rune bear that you're afraid of. Just trust me. Yeah. Just go do it. And I did it, and then you meet Blythe. And he does, and then, like, a fucking superhero drop down right in front of you. Hell yeah. So the game definitely wants you to think, like, this is a homie. This is somebody I can trust. And for a From Software newbie like me, I am looking for allies at this point. I am being <laughs> murdered by everything, and I'm scared, and I'm sweaty. You see that bear back there? <laughs> fucking rune bears? That's not even a boss. So having a little wolf boy, like... I was like, I was down with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Plus, it was such a cool fucking character design. It's, it's just so cool. Badass wolf, man. Yeah. His armor looks slick as fuck. Got yeah. a big old sword. No, no, you're super down. And he like he helps you in one of those first ever jail fights. Yeah. Like it it turns into like he is your homie. So when you hit the point later on in which Ronnie is like, hey, you want to get in on this? You gotta kill Blythe. Yeah. Right? If you want to be my lover, you gotta kill my dog. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and Friendship it, lasts forever, but that dog is gonna go dog, crazy. That Ooh. dog is gonna die. Right? It's like zig zig gone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, which again is like that's that's part of the joy of the way FromSoft tells their stories is in these little moments in which you are just playing, and you come across these small little story segments that unravel so naturally. Yeah, I love it when, yeah, like friend of a friend, and you just see Blythe like, oh, you're here as well. Cool. Thank God I fucking know somebody at this party. Exactly. (laughs) Hey, Blythe. Hey, long time no see. (laughs) You just sit by Blythe the rest of the party. You go sit by the dog at the party. That's what you do regardless. Of course. Uh, And so that's a really neat and I think well thought out through thread of storytelling. And it's just a ragtag group as well. Um, Because EG... Um, a troll blacksmith who's worked for the Karians for a long time, likes to read, mm-hmm. generally makes wiser decisions, but he's there to help as well as Blythe. And then we have Celibus. Mm-hmm. And Celibus, the moment you walk in, he's like, I fucking hate you and you suck, but I have to be nice. I, they told me to be nice to you, <laughs> but you're stupid. What can I do for you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Celibus is the other part, and he is even trying to undermine Ronnie. Mm-hmm. In the long run, Celibus, we can do a quick tangent on Celibus. Go ahead. Uh, Celibus, he's, well, after he calls you useless 10 times and punches you in the face, he's like, can you give this potion to Nefeli Lou? I don't know why he's obsessed with Nefeli, but we'll find out. Yeah. And then you can stumble upon his extra room, his like love dungeon. He's fucking those puppets. 100% fucking those puppets. <laughs> he is I think 100%. he's fucking the dolls. <laughs> he's 100% fucking the dolls. Well, you find the main dungeon in this hidden area, and you're like, oh. And the way the dolls, like, they're on their knees and sitting up, that's why I believe Padilla is the one controlling Celibus, because when Celibus dies, he's in that same pose, which you don't ever see that pose used like for other deaths right, outside right, of right. that. But it's just weird enough finding all these dolls that are chained up, and then you see a message... Don't touch my dolls and don't go in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't look under my bed, Dad. You go into his bedroom and there is a bed next to a chained up puppet. Yeah. And that's Selen, we find out. Or Selen uses that body later on. Well, and that's the the fun part is like because that is an important lore area, there are three different quests that can take you mm. to Salen and his sex puppet dungeon. Yeah. Because and because like uh, again, completely optional. You don't have to go there, but the developers are like, "Oh, this is really cool. We want you to be in, you know, we want you to see this neat stuff. So we're going to give you as many opportunities as possible." Check this out. On it. He's fucking them. He's fucking he's <laughs> fucking them dolls. But like and and the the way they've made it so simple. I think like simple coding to me is really uh 
is really important, especially when they're trying to get across. Like we, we talked about with Ronnie, where it's like, oh, she's got a little whisper voice. She's a cute little doll. She's got blue skin. You mm. want to love her. Yep. Uh, Celibus is immediately like, I hate you. You're a dickhead. I'll work with you, whatever. Give this drug potion to the first NPC that helped you in a fight ever. Who's only ever been nice and tried to stand up for a village being oppressed. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I, I am a villain. I am a bad guy. This is me telling you I'm a bad guy. Very simple terms. I fucking love that. <laughs> and after you find his love dungeon, his sex torture chambers, you mm. come back. He's like, oh, well, you didn't tell the cops. So I guess you're kind of cool. I get. He's Do you like, want one? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. If you don't tell anyone, I'll give you one of my lesser puppets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he sends you on some quest to find starlight shards. Mm-hmm. And you don't even have to give the potion to Nefeli Lou. Right. Uh, you can just give it to Gideon or give it to the Dung Eater. Either way, he if he, you don't give it to Nefeli, he says, hmm, maybe I didn't cook it right or something. Right. Yeah. I don't think he really believes you, though. He doesn't know. Which probably kills him. Yeah. You know, he's got to be like, you motherfucker, I can't read you yet. <laughs> he knows about my sex dungeon. I really can't do anything against yep. him right but now. I gave him a sex puppet. He seemed cool with my sex puppet. Uh, I don't know. Well, and... <laughs> One of the sex puppets is just the guy with a jar on his head. Fucking love that. <laughs> he, yeah. So he doesn't discriminate. He wants to have sex with all kinds of puppets. Good for him. Well, and, you know, I've, I've actually used a couple uh, of those puppets in run. His, uh, his puppet, he has a puppet there to help you during the Radon fight. And uh, if you get that puppet, uh, I think it's actually very useful. Dolores the Sleeping Arrow? Yes. Yeah. You know, she heals you during battles. It's a very nice puppet. And a summon that can... Put enemies to sleep, which is a very unique. Mm, yes, thing. that would be super useful. Yeah, it's it's really fun running with that as your main uh, summon is really really fun, and it gives it gives you like a different strategic option for um, boss fights and enemies. And then you also just think like, Salvas definitely killed that person and had sex with them a bunch as a puppet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Summon, <laughs> so, summon, <laughs> fight the, the wolves. <laughs> Sequel Cast 2 and Friends is a podcast looking at movies in a franchise one film at a time, hosted by me, Matt Bradley Shuri, Alex, and Thrasher. We also look at video games. We're working through Sierra Online's adventure games from Mystery House all the way up through Gabriel Knight 3 and larger pop culture topics. It's a lot of fun. For more info, go to sequelcast2.com, only on the Tokyo Beat Network. Today's show was brought to you by Epos Gaming Audio. With a comprehensive lineup of both wired and wireless headsets, gaming amplifiers, microphones, and webcams, Epos has everything you need to experience the power of audio. Like their H6 Pro lineup, which features two versions, an open or closed headset. The closed headset allows you to tap into exceptionally detailed audio and seals out ambient noise, while the open version delivers natural high fidelity audio with an incredible soundstage. Both headsets include a magnetic detachable microphone and a sleek design that has no wild RGB configurations. Just good design. Listeners can save 15% by visiting www.eposaudio.com slash gaming and entering code EPOSFRIEND15 at checkout. That is EPOSFRIEND15 at checkout. And then, you know, the other the other lore layer there is I know like, you know, the big question is who killed our finger maiden, right? When we first awake in the lands between there is a dead finger maiden that was supposed to be our finger maiden. It was Vara. Who killed our finger maiden? Vara's a, a suspect. Uh, Melina's a suspect. I don't trust that motherfucker Patches. Patches is a suspect, but also Celibus is a suspect because he has his own finger maiden puppet. Yeah. Did he kill ours and take the Ther- name? Theralina, I think is her name. Yeah. Um, and it even says like, um, a tarnish without a finger maiden, a finger maiden without a tarnish. Right. Yeah. So maybe, or maybe he came across a dead body and was like, I'd like to fuck that puppet. <laughs> Throw it on the, pick it up. <laughs> throw, throw it on the pile. Right? So it's like there's a lot of layers to this this area, which is, all, is a very small area of the map, is very story-centric. It's called the Three Sisters because of the three towers. We have Rena's Rise. Mm-hmm. No one's lived there for a while. I, in my mind, my mind can, I'm like, oh, it's just Ronnie's aunt, who was also the Snow Witch. Could be. Uh, crazy homeless Aunt Rena. She left her home a while ago. Then we have... Ronnie's rise, a lot of R's. Yeah. Yep. yep. And, and then we have Celevis somehow moved into the neighborhood. 
I'm here too. <laughs> you want to come to my house? First thing he tried to do was set up like an HOA. And he's like, you guys need your bed. Your bushes are way too tall. I need you to trim those down. <laughs> All these bushes are really hindering my, uh, my view into your windows. <laughs> my view into your windows. And it's getting harder and harder for me to get into my sex dungeon. <laughs> Can you turn your lights off by the dungeon? I mean, your front yard. <laughs> Listen, I love your ice dragon. I love that he hangs out. I, I get your vibe. I get your vibe. But every time I walk into my secret sex dungeon, he, he shoots magic breath at me. It's kind of you got to chain that dragon up. Yeah. It is outside barking. It's, it's kind of annoying. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to be a bad neighbor. Okay. And can you tell Blythe not to howl at 3 a.m. every day? <laughs> every day. Fucking edgelord Blythe. EG. Oh, my soul burns for EG's Ronnie. fine. We all like EG. Though. EG. <laughs> Everyone likes He's him. cool. Yeah. So, no, it's a, it's a beautiful area. Like, and, and because it's, it's not necessary, it is an area that you feel you have discovered. Like, that's not on the critical path. And so it is, it's one of those areas where, like, I am choosing to go here, and yeah. therefore it is more meaningful. Yeah, um, you're, you're watching the story happen, and you're a part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we fight right when we get past the Karian Manor, the Glintstone Dragon Adula, which I just love that this dragon ate so many sorcerers, it just turned into a Glintstone Dragon. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. You are what you eat. Coming from Alexander Iron Fist, that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a theme. Yeah. It's I have 30 manpower inside of me. <laughs> yeah, 30 manpower. Yeah. And that's one of those that's one of those dragon fights that is uh, slightly disappointing because you don't actually kill the dragon; you just hit it enough where it runs away. It made me scared because I'm like, "That motherfucker's gonna come back. <laughs> He's gonna be stronger." <laughs> oh. There's a couple dragon fights that do that, and it's very. I like. I understand the purpose where it's like maybe it's not a real dragon; it's like a summon, but it's it, it feels not satisfying. Like, why even have a dragon there? I already had to fight a boss to get here. Why even have the dragon here? Yeah. Just to reinforce uh, Ronnie's got a lot of protection. I, I guess, yeah. She knows everyone's coming for her. Um, so she admits to it, too. As If you've done the Rajir quest line, when you get there, you can confront her like, Knight of the Black Knives, huh? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got me. Uh -huh. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Uh she, I don't think she fully plays her hand right away as to like what she's up to, but she, you can volunteer to help. Yeah. And she didn't even see that coming. She's like, I guess, like, if you want to, I need the stars to start moving. Well, it's what she needs to do is get down into Nokron to get the Finger Slayer Blade. Right. Is what her goal is. So she sends you to go meet up with Blythe. And I do love that. This is before we're done. If you go down into the river well, that's right below no, b below a uh, Nakron, Blythe is just looking up there. He's like, "Damn it! How do I get up there? It's right there." <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the same thing we are doing as players. Yeah, which exactly. is like, how the fuck? We How get the up there. Right? I showed up and I was right there with them. I'm like, I know, man. It's right. Like, you I thought you me. were supposed to tell me how to get up there. I'm looking at you for answers, big dog. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. I we, forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it'd be a weird scenario. Like, to, you have to have the timing right to yeah. run into all that stuff. It'd mm -hmm. be weird to get all the way to Ronnie before going to Radon first. It's just timing. It's like it's, a weird set, of right? Timing. And you can. It's it's all it's all weird. But yeah, so you run into him after you work for Ronnie down below in Nakron, and he's like, "Yep, yeah, we're still working on it. Uh, let me know. Yeah. yeah, if you got any theories, meet me back here. Yeah. I'll be here." Trying to figure it I've out. I've been yeah. here three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but a crucible night way the fuck out there. You see him, he's lost too. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. How'd he get there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really confused. <laughs> but then you go to the Radon Festival. Yeah. And uh, once Radon uh, is killed, um, a meteor falls right down above Nakron. I don't know. I, that wasn't her plan, I don't think. But she needed the stars to move in. Maybe she... She didn't need the stars to move. I think she just needed to get the Finger Slayer Blade. The only way to do that is to make the stars again move. I be, uh, If we want to extrapolate, it's never explicitly said, but if yeah. we want to extrapolate, she uses star magic and moon sorcery. She was probably sending shit to punch Tr holes in the earth yeah. in order to help find the Finger Slayer Blade, and Radon was keeping him back. She could have told Blythe. 
Like, I have a plan. Don't go there. Go there. <laughs> All I know is when uh, when I first found the hole, uh, this was before they did the update where they put a little marker on your map. Yeah. And that was the coolest fucking thing. Yes. Because I didn't know. And I, at that point in the game, you're fast traveling everywhere. Like, everywhere. And so I was like, where the fuck am I supposed to go? What Like, I was legitimately and genuinely lost. And so I'm just traveling around, and you start seeing in the distance floating rocks. And you're like, wait a minute. That like, wasn't there. That's that different. wasn't there before. Like, now there's a map marker, which, yes, it's easier, but... Eh, okay, Unnecessary. Eh, I think so. Yeah. Let, let, us, uh, let us suffer a little bit. You've <laughs> been 99.9% .9 perfect on your choices to, like, make the player figure things out, and yeah. then you just caved for that one thing. Just that one thing. Yeah, uh, but it, that was a beautiful discovery the first time. And with the map marker, it's still, it's a sight. That is a vista. You know, it, once you teleport there or ride there and you just see like, this is different. The map has changed. What the fuck? It's wonderful. Yeah. It was, I also discovered it without the map marker, but that's because I routinely got my ass kicked by things. So I would constantly go back to the Weeping <laughs> Peninsula and Limgrave oh. to like, you know, just kind of hit the gym a little bit, you know, <laughs> try to get my confidence back up. Yeah, yeah. So I'd constantly go back to fight shit or go do old bosses. They're like, maybe I'm strong enough now. Yeah, yeah. So when I rode up on it, I'm like, yo, this is different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I guess I got to go down here. Right? right. And it, you're right, though. It is one of the coolest aspects of the game because it's already an amazing exploration game. Mm -hmm. You never know what's going to be behind the door or around the corner. And when they start changing the map, from what you're used to, you're like, yo, Wait, you were already you doing something. You can change so good. the terrain? Like, that's Get not supposed here. to happen in video games. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, we talked about Nokron before, and they're their own set of people. They were ancient. They were put down there because they were making the Golden Order upset. Mm -hmm. And they made the Finger Slayer Blade. Mm. And, which, what? I mean, okay, can I not just stab it with a, a knife? like a regular fork or something, those big hairy wigglers. But this blade is designed through years of research and technology. We put the power to slay the fingers. Yesterday we put liquid paper on a bee. It died. <laughs> <laughs> the, you, the finger slayer blade is down there, though, and you bring it up because that's what Ronnie needs. Yeah. And once you give her the blade, that... We'll finish Celavis's quest. So if you want, uh, Celavis dies. Then right. if you want to fully experience the the love of Celavis, you need to do that beforehand. Or if you want one of the best summons in the game, Dung Eater. Yeah, at least get that potion and hold on to it because I have never got the Dung Eater puppet, but I want it. Oh my god! So to get the Dung Eater puppet, you have to give that potion instead of giving it to Nefeli Lou or. Gideon, you have to give it to the dung eater. You have to give it when, when he's when he's like, please put put something in my mouth, and like, not that. <laughs> yeah, you have, and you have to get a little ways in the dung eater's quest line too. I think. Oh, and yeah, it's all it's all fucky. You have to get a little bit in the dung eater's quest line, and then you have to uh, let the dung eater fight uh, the crab guy, and then you give the dung eater. So you have to be like, yeah, dung eater, I'm cool with this. And then you have to give dung eater the potion. But Celavis still has to be alive to make the puppet. So you have to do all of this before you give Ronnie the blade. There is a lot of things you have to do right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But and it's like it, arguably it's relatively well, it's it's mid. You can get it mid game. But it is incredibly worth it. That dung eater summon literally can carry you. Like mm. it is so fucking powerful. Yeah, yeah. And there's someone I'm comfortable put, turning into a puppet is the dung eater. Right. You probably have this coming, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then after that, Celavis's body, like we mentioned, will be in that position. If you drop down into the Carian Manor from the outside, mm -hmm. you can find Padilla, who is Celavis. I'm know. comfortable saying that. All the, all the uh, it's all pointing there, like, and it's uh, he's a he's a strange merchant. As like the things he sells aren't necessarily useful. He's he has puppets around him in Caria Manor. Uh, it's it's hard to get to him as a merchant. Like you have to warp into Ronnie's place and then like get to him yeah. every time. So he's he's a strange merchant. So that all is leading me to believe that he has a lo a bigger lore. Uh, purpose than just a merchant. Yeah. Um, but Padilla, you hear from the outside, like, no, I'm your friend. 
don't kill me. <laughs> and the puppets have killed him, and they're just standing around, and they're not aggro at you at all. Yeah. They just kind of... I'm surprised if those puppets are still moving. Right. Might be a different kind of magic. But at this point, you give Ronnie the blade, and she says, I need, I'm going away now. The next part of my journey is going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. So she gives you the Karian inverted statue. The, though brief, you gave me fine service. <laughs> like, you know, call? <laughs> <laughs> like, it wasn't that brief. <laughs> it was pretty good. I mean, it was like, if you think about it. <laughs> it was a weird night. <laughs> I just saw a sex dungeon, okay? We just, we did a lot of like pre service, and I think that counts towards the full service. <laughs> I slayed that finger, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do two fingers next time. Right? I'll do <laughs> two fingers, butthole. Yeah. Fingers, butthole. <laughs> Try fingers. Uh, Try fingers, butthole. Uh, right. Oh, that's... Oh, fuck. The, I for, you forget about the, the invert... I forgot about the whole inverted fucking school thing. Because yeah. I spent... Uh, I went there before I got the statue, and I just circled Same. that stupid fucking uh, ladder for maybe an hour just to be like, how the fuck do I get up here? How and, the fuck do I then, get up here? And you get up there, and you're walking around. You jump down on the chandeliers. Is this anything? Yeah. What's, what's Brad going had on? to tell me. I broke down. I was like, yeah. where the fuck do I go, man? Yeah. And I, it's, yeah, you, it's, you're supposed to. You're like It looks like you're supposed to go up that way because you want to get to... Um, where you activate your great rune right. from Ranala. Right, well, actually, right. not from Ranala. You don't get one because Ronnie took her great rune and threw it away. Yeah. She did have one, but we don't know what happened to it. I don't believe we ever find that out. Well, yeah. she, she killed herself, so she wouldn't have one. Good for her. Good for her. There's a red hair. Uh, right. So you go, you, go, uh, you go down the up tower and end up up in the down tower uh, you're down with the sickness, but you, you <laughs> see you see Ronnie's true form, her giant her giantess form. Yeah, it's always cool when you just see like the the body, like when you defeat Mar Margot Morgot Morgot. When you defeat Morgot, and he just turns into a regular looking little corpse, yeah. uh, you can see their like godness disappear, and they just kind of revert to looking normal. But yeah, that's Ronnie's actual body yeah. up at the top of that tower, and it's. Unassuming, it's small. Uh, this is where she was the night of the Black Knives when she killed herself at the exact moment. I don't know if she got a text from uh, <laughs> Tish. I think Tish is the leader of the, the or Alette Alecto. Alecto is the leader of the Black Knife Assassins, and her daughter is Tish. Ah, there we go. And I, every time I say Tish, I say Tish. it like Gomez Adams Tish. Tish. <laughs> Right, so she's there, and that's where you can get the curse mark of death to continue Fia's whole huggy deal, and you can get <laughs> you can get the stargazer uh, emblem for more intelligence. Yep. Yeah, and I, I also really like it when you you're doing a quest and you get to Fia, and she's like, "If only someone." Oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> but but first, you have to hug me. Deal. And then I would whisper my quest. Oh, you gave it to me <laughs> so strong. You did the can entire quest that? before you came here? Can, oh. I, can I still get that hug, though? Can, uh, of course. Still. Really looking forward to that. Right? And like, always, always hug. There's, there's not enough hugs in the lands between. <laughs> it's a rough, rough time here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have to go up to the top there the, the, to get the curse mark of death. Mm. And... At this point, Rena's rise opens as well. That's right. Yep, because previously locked, despite no one being home. And, Magic lock. Yep, and must have been Ronnie's doing. You go to the top, and you're able to get the Snow Witch armor set. Mm -hmm. So you're actually, it's the Snow Witch set, and Ronnie's doll is wearing it. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, there's no... A plus B equals C, but there is an A and a B. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and and that's the the neat thing is is I found that entrance to the Ansel River after I found the other entrance because you can also get to the Ansel River main if you fight the two big gargoyles. Um, at the end of Nokron. At the end of Nokron the, the, City. The aqueducts. That hidden path through yeah. the aqueducts. You fight those two gargoyles, go up the casket. And that's the other way into the Ansel River main. Yeah. And that's where I found it first. 
Uh, I didn't. E- I didn't even know. Like you could. I. I forgot about that third damn tower. <laughs> There's still times where I run into a way gate and I'm like, "Where the fuck did you go? <laughs> <laughs> I never had to use that." Right? Like, what is this? Uh, um, yeah, and you find you find an actual doll. You find another doll, a baby right. doll, a, a cuter doll, a cuter doll, the hand doll. Uh, the Snow Witch set. I just wanted to mention it. Meant, oh. uh, it says, "Once worn by the snowy crone, who the young Ronnie encountered deep in the woods, mm. she was a witch." Blah blah blah. It is said that the doll that houses Ronnie's soul was modeled after her. So, who we're sexually attracted to is the snowy crone, actually. Yeah. Unless you're into Ronnie's personality, which is no, great. As I well. love a witch. It's also interesting that the puppets that Rayu Lucaria, that th- those like uh, forearm puppets, mm-hmm. Ronnie has forearms as well. It might be part of like that puppet magic. Ooh. Yeah, the lies of P is going to ape on all of this shit. <laughs> OG Grimace. <laughs> yeah. Did you play the lies of P demo? I did not. I, I'm probably going to play it when it comes out, so I'm not messing around with any demo. I'm like, I'll play the game when it comes out. If you're into Bloodborne with just a nice layer of Geppetto on top of it, that's what you're getting. It it looks like that. It, part of, I know this is tangent territory, but like that looks, uh, it almost looks too much like, what if Bloodborne but Puppet? To the point where it's like, I don't know if I like that. But it, you also have an itch, and it's scratching it. Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> I don't know if I like it either, but I miss Bloodborne a lot. I'm going to play it. Yeah. I'm going to play it hard. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. I don't know how I feel about it right now. The demo was actually okay. I don't know how I feel about like sexy Pinocchio, is I guess maybe part of my problem. I think it's about time. You know Wally, but what if sexy? <laughs> but what if sexy, right? Like yeah. this is this is the CWification of Pinocchio, <laughs> and I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for that. Give Pinocchio a better haircut and some nice clothes, and yep, that's it. And a little tweed He's got haircut. slick lines like my nose is not the only thing that grows, and boom, <laughs> sexy. My love for you grows, and then his nose. Wink, wink. <laughs> Lie to me, baby. Lie to me. <laughs> if if a female character says "lie to me, baby," I'm out. I'm I'm turning it off and breaking the disc. <laughs> it's gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen, and I don't want it to. But hey, what, no, do, you, what do you think the P stands it. for? Go. You lies a penis. Go. <laughs> <laughs> There is a dickhead in the Karian study hall named Perceptor Miriam. <laughs> There's a dickhead. <laughs> There's a dickhead. <laughs> she shoots a lot of magic at you when I find her untenable. Uh, I do not like you, Miriam. <laughs> but you do get one of the uh, coolest headgears. Yeah. The, uh, the little, the, the mask. The hood. mask of confidence. Yes. I yeah. fucking love that headgear. You know, that's Celibus's, uh headgear minus the hat. Right. He's got, he's got the same headgear with the big floppy hat. When Radagon married Renala, he ordered all of the preceptors to wear these masks to make it clear you're not allowed to talk about um, this marriage to other people. And it's like, could I not have just promised? Like, he makes them wear that uh, to keep the secret. Uh, and they were all just looking around like, why the fuck did we get I invited? I don't care. I wouldn't have like, taken this job had right. I known this was going to become mandatory. Yeah, just, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, 2023. You two can get married. Like, it's fine. <laughs> Same thing happened at McDonald's when there was a forbidden marriage. We all put the Hamburglar helmets on and just stood in a circle like, we probably shouldn't be here right now. Did Ronald marry the, the chicken nugget lady? <laughs> yeah, it was well, Wendy. Ronald married Wendy? Yeah, it was bad. Who's the chicken nugget lady? What was She was just a chicken. Uh, the bird? What was her Birdie. name? Birdie. Birdie? Yeah. Ronald. It's a clever name. What are we going to name this bird? Ronald name, ma- married bird E. <laughs> And and their forbidden love uh, birthed grimace on yeah, our birth chicken selects. Now, if instead of the <laughs> lies of P, if it was the lies of R, and it was Ronald McDonald mixed with Bloodborne, I would be in hard. Well, because you know they would <laughs> up the a, horror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need more meat for the grills. <laughs> We're going to Grimace Island. <gasps> The lone jogger would run up and just steal your McNuggets, which are your souls. Because if you didn't know, the Hamburglar's original name was the lone jogger, and he was creepy and old, and he always just, like, he'd open his cape and it said lone jogger underneath it. He had a deviated septum and a big nose from all the coke. And, you know... Couldn't speak any English either. Because of the drugs. The seven... Because... And Grimace is the embodiment of how your taste buds react to a milkshake. Yep. Yep. Man, you know you know your lore. That's Jack. the fucked, the most fucked up thing that any coked up '70s ad agency could ever come up with. <laughs> like, okay, all right, it's like a taste bud, but 
when I drink the milk, day. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like my butt plug, and it's like, what? Fuck. Uh, I know that we did. That's uh, scary. Make it purple. My <laughs> wife and I did some deep, deep grimace uh, uh, lore investigations yeah. for a character that she was working on once, and we fell down a hard rabbit hole. There's oh, Uncle there O'Grimacy. There is a rabbit hole. Uncle O'Grimacy. Uh, Uncle hit, O'Grimacy for the Shamrock Shake. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes, and there's uh, the the creators of Rugrats made six episodes of a McDonald's TV show. Where they actually go to Grimace Island, and Grimace's brother is the king of the tribe. Yeah. Game of Thrones. And it's like Mark Mothersbaugh and like the same creators of Rugrats yeah, like yeah. did the animation. It it looks really good. Oh, yeah. I got I to gotta watch that. That's great. I, anyway, in, instead of talking about this horror, let's talk about other horror. Yeah, so as you mentioned, yeah. we find a miniature doll, a little Ronnie. And we find a toy in our Happy Meal, <laughs> if you will. Ooh, this one looks like Ronnie. I'm going to talk to it three times in a row and see if it says anything. Now, this is real talk. Who actually knew to talk to it three times or who, who found that information online? Because I found that information online. Deal. Uh, same. Yeah. Same. But uh, I did see the option talk to the doll and nothing happened. Yeah. So my thought was I must need to do... At a different fire or yes. something. That was my exact thinking. Yes, yeah. yes. Or I'm missing something. Or it didn't work the first time and I might have Googled it as well. That's possible. Yeah. yeah. And I want to say I came across it just watching another uh, like another person play Elden Ring. But my initial reaction was like, oh, this is like a key that needs to be used somewhere else. Yeah. I am glad I have it. But I felt, I, I felt a little cheated. Well, part of me felt cheated, right? Where it's just like, oh, uh, a secret was spoiled for me. But the other part of me says there's no goddamn way I would have figured out, talked to it three times at this fire. Yeah, yeah. no way. No way. Esoteric. Right? Yeah. Little bit. And obviously, like, part of the Souls community in general is us all talking to each other and figuring that out. We, and I'd say we're on, the, we're on the higher echelon of people that have spent a lot of time thinking and talking about this game. Yeah. I never would figure out to go in front of a statue and do a certain, like, T-pose to make it turn into a lady. <laughs> and you go in the community like, oh, it's obvious, dude. Didn't you go to the turtle pope and didn't he tell you to do that? I was like, for real? For real. Did you do that for real? Or did did someone data mine that information and then put it on the wiki? Those like, data miners are crazy. They, are, they know everything right away. Uh, which is good because like there are some shit like that that is just too complicated. I, I'm a big fan of obs, obfuscation. Yeah. Ooh. I, I was surprised by myself. You but impressed I yourself. I did. <laughs> I do that often. Uh, you know, like I want a challenge. We want to put a hurdle in front of us, but those ones are too much. <laughs> yeah. You have to acquire a very specific incantation, go to a certain spot. It's not even an incantation. It's a just is it a no it is a it's an incantation incanta it's an incantation that also requires faith and intelligence so no one is building their build to do exactly that thing so you need to acquire the incantation then you need to respec use the incantation and then respec again so fucked also gold mask goes eh. <laughs> <laughs> whoa whoa but then you get his loincloth and uh, that's what the end Worth game is it. for me. Worth it. Uh, screw your dolls. Yeah. I want that loincloth. I cloth. want that loincloth. Uh, <laughs> COVID's safe. He's always wearing his mask and also naked as fuck. Mm -hmm. He protects only what matters, his you face and his jewels. You put yep. that loincloth on uh, along with um, uh, Morgoth's cloak, which uh, gives you a deep V-neck. You can see some side boob and, and, and a lot of booty. <laughs> it's and it's like great. Jersey Shore up it's, in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's hobo Jersey Shore. It's great. My I'm character's in. name is Wow. <laughs> Somehow that's a holy man. Mm. But uh, so, yeah, so you talk to the doll, you go through that shit. Then the doll's like, well, fine, I guess. All right. You can be you can chill with me. I like that. She makes fun of you, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like you always talk to dolls, dude. I'm, you're talking back like <laughs> obviously works. Right. Wake up. <laughs> if you think talking's bad, you should see what Selvis was doing to them. <laughs> Well, Luck, I, luckily, you didn't go that route. <laughs> I'm trying to remember because she says she says like I need your help, right? Like I need your help with something. Yep. And what is it that she needs your help with? Is it just killing Blythe, or there's something before that? The baleful shadow, which isn't Blythe, but there are other um, 
wolf assassins that are out there right now. Mm -hmm. And at the end of Noxtella, guarding the Lake of Rot, you run into the Baleful Shadow. Which and is, it's, it's Blythe's model, but it's not Blythe. Uses different magic. What? Yeah, it's definitely like in the, the description, it's not Blythe. Because Blythe wouldn't use what's the difference? It's got like specific uh That sounds like bull hockey to me. That's all that's Blythe, baby. The <laughs> Baleful Shadow Sword is imbued with Death and Death, not the Frost Enchantment of Blythe's sword. And she even mentions like there are other sh um shadows running around that are trying to stop me. Okay, if that is true, which I'm on the fence on. Okay. If that is true, I'm going to call straight up bull hockey on FromSoft. Then give us a different model and literally any other model. If if you're making like we have one wolf dude, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And also, if you want to look like Blythe, go to Celibus's tower, jump off the side and find the Blythe Halloween mask, which is weird, it's which is weird. weird. It's perfectly modeled to look like Blythe. It's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? He, he fucked that mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked that mask. Yeah. Uh, yes. So you fight the baleful shadow. Yes. Uh, and that's the last thing the miniature doll needed from you as well. That's right, because the baleful shadow was hunting the miniature doll. Who and the and Ronnie's essence was in the middle of hunting the uh, fingers to slay. Yes. Is is what was going on while you weren't paying attention. She's like, I got fingers to slay, but this thing is hunting me, so kill it, and then I'll slay the fingers. Then you know. Then I'll, I'll like you more. It's like, Ronnie, use words. You could have told me a lot of this stuff. <laughs> I kind of earned your trust, I think. I didn't give you Celibus's potion. Right. You could have just, I need you to do this specifically, and then this will happen. <laughs> Would have been appreciated. It. Did you have to turn into a miniature doll? And I guess what was her plan there? When she goes mini doll, was she expecting... The doll to make stuff happen? No, she was hiding. I, I want to say oh, she, she was specifically hiding. says she's hiding from the Baleful Shadows. Okay. Which is why you have to kill them so that her big doll can go kill some fingies. Those hairy wigglers. Hairy wigglers. But that gets us to the Lake of Rot. Which we are not going to go into today. We're not? No, the Lake oh, of Rot fuck. will require a little more... Oh, fuck, that area is that area's fucked. You, I mean... You're welcome to come back if you, <laughs> if you want no, to, that's Jeff. Fine. That's fine. That's uh, fine. Now, the Lake of Rot, I would want to do a little more so research fucked. into the, the god that is buried down there. Right. Yep. Which I believe is a scorpion-ish looking thing, because you find that scorpion stinger, and it says about the mm -hmm. god of Rot who is buried down there. There's... A, no time today. No Oh, no, no. no I, like, it's, that's the whole game. What I, the one thing I will say uh, that I wanted to say about Lake of Rot is a lot of people, um, during my yearly playthroughs of all the Soul games, which I do, uh, I do every year, uh, a lot of people give a lot of shit to Dark Souls 2. Mm -hmm. for their world design. Specifically, I'm thinking about you You go up the rickety wooden wind, windmill and then ride an elevator above the windmill and you're in a lava castle. Yeah. That's stupid world design, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to say e something equally as stupid is the Lake of Rot, it, where it is um, how the Lake of Rot flows down into clean water, but the rot somehow flows up to infect other things, that doesn't make sense. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. I get it thematically. I understand lore-wise why we, why we need a Lake of Rot. I'm saying its placement in the world is equally as They fun. were like, listen, they are going to be so fucking confused by the names. They are not going to think about the rot and water physics. <laughs> we will have them so confused. This dude's fucking dolls over here. <laughs> like, they got so many other questions. No one's even going to ask. Yeah. And what really, they're really just going to be cursing and throwing their controller because they have to run through it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. They'll just be mostly upset. Half of them are still fighting the Golden Knight at the beginning of the game. <laughs> they don't realize you can just run around them. You can run around everything. Guys, I looked at the data. They've been killing Albinorix a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that recently. They re released another set of, like, um, fun facts. Yeah. You guys hate Albinorix. <laughs> they know where we're farming for runes. And I just nod as Gideon. I'm like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> fucking kill him. 
Uh, so that leads us down to Estelle. Well, we're, we're just going to call... We're it. just going to call... No, that's fair. We've been talking about... Oh, my God. We've been talking about Elden Ring for a long time. For quite a while. For quite and, a while. And because um, we'll talk about... On the next episode, we'll go into the Lake of Rot and the Moonlit Altar. Mm. But before we went further along, after <laughs> Nocron, we had... And the Deep Root Deaths, we had to give context to what Ronnie was up to before we get to the Moonlit Altar. So uh, that this episode was us finally... Busting that Ronnie nut that we have been holding for 19 episodes because we, we just, she needed her own episode and we need to give her time. Yeah. She definitely deserves one. Talk to your dolls. Yeah. Just, just ask them how dolls. they're doing. Well, and clearly this is the side quest that resonated most with players because more people have this ending than the regular ending, which to me is so fucking bizarre. <laughs> I think the biggest part of that though is like an entire area of the game is kind of you have to follow the quest mm -hmm. and people want to do that. And then, cause you want to see everything. Yeah. And then if you've already done all the work, you might as well get the ending that goes along with it. Plus Ronnie. I mean, plus Ronnie, the, the, the beautiful thing is when you are going around learn, uh, Lernia and you see like the little castles and stuff up on that cliff top and you're like, how the fuck do I get up there? And oh, it's fuck. called pulling a blithe. And yeah. <laughs> God, I just I can Ooh, see it. How do I get up there? And then you start going like beneath and you see yourself heading towards it and you're like, oh, this is it. This is how I get yeah. up there. Now I gotta go through the stupid ass lake of rot. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't realize even going through the lake of rot that I would come out the other side on top, but when I did, I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Because I wasn't sure I was ever going to get up there. Right? Like, is this DLC area? But no, no, they had a plan. They had a plan. And it's true. Ronnie's quest is the most completed ending. Mm -hmm. And I, I do enjoy it. I love it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fun. I like her lore. I like the Ray Lucaria. Mm -hmm. I like the Karians. I like the astrologers. Mm -hmm. I like subverting gods. I like killing yourself no, <laughs> pass. Uh, I was going to make another ginger joke. Ah, uh, we love gingers. Boo. Tom, our podcast was started by a ginger, actually. Way to go, Tom. Shout outs to Tom. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. I, um, I believe you. Yeah. Big fans. <laughs> Never change, Ronnie. <laughs> Just clean up your body when you leave it. Mm, but, but she's not using Throw it. Throw me in the dumps, though, when I'm, when I'm gone. I don't care. <laughs> They uh, did a piss ass job of cremation. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Jack, if our listeners wanted to find you, find more of your content, how would they do so? All the content. Uh, you can find me several ways. Uh, if you go to redlettermedia.com or the Red Letter Media YouTube channel, you can watch me talk about bad movies on Best of the Worst. If you want uh, video game or Dungeons and Dragons content, you can go to escapistmagazine.com. Uh, season three of Adventure is Nigh is starting soon, probably. Uh, maybe uh, hopefully before this comes out, I don't know when this is coming out, but uh, is starting soon or is all episode one is already out. Uh, if you want to see uh, me and my D&D group, including Yahtzee Croshaw playing live together in one room. Uh, so much fun. Uh, or if you're ever in the Milwaukee area, you can come down to Comedy Sports, go to CSZMKE.com, and I perform live, short form, sports themed improv, which is just as cool as it sounds. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's fucking yeah. awesome. It is a great time. Uh, our friend uh, Tyler over here has a great review. Uh, yeah, I. it didn't cost much to get in. The beer was cheap. I got really drunk, and I still had money the next day. Boom. And it was fun. <laughs> I had a blast. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much for stopping by the Absolutely. show, Jack. We um, big fans of yours. And thanks for being generous with your time. Hey, thanks for uh, working around my schedule. I love talking about Elden Ring. Happy to be on. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll have you on again, possibly for Zelda Talk. Tears of the dogs. Yeah, I yeah. got a lot of work to do to yeah. catch up to that. <laughs> He's still in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Oh, shit. A lot of work. You got a lot of work to do, man. Uh, we are Hair of the Dogcast. We are Elden Dogs. We are part of the Tokyo Beat Podcast Network. Check out all of the other amazing shows. If you wanted to support us, you can check us out on patreon.com slash hair of the dogcast. These episodes will be available much. Elden Dogs is available much earlier for Patreon supporters. And for as low as three bucks, you'd get access to these. So we would love to have you join our community in our Discord. Uh, special thanks to executive producers Brian Ward, uh, Kip Kipper, Ryan Kristinik, Phil Wright, and Jordan Hoff. We appreciate your support. And 
Tyler, would you give us your closing thoughts on dolls and puppets? Hug your dolls. They've seen some shit. But don't do more than hug. Yes. Hard stop. Hard stop. Dry hugs. Dry 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 hug your dolls. Not wet hugs. (laughs) Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll talk Lake of Rot next time. Bye-bye.